So what was this? It was a back bacon? Yeah, so I'm at this restaurant in Soho called Imperial Number no. 9. Which is Sam Talbot's place. Sam Talbot's place. He was a runner-up on Top Chef. And hence that song. That was the opening exactly. song. Yeah, and, and and Sam and I do this show called DIY Life on AOL, and Sam represents the, the chef aspect. I, obviously, the home improvement, a guy named Carter Oosterhouse. Oh, well, yeah, the guy. Design. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we, uh, I had a chance at Sam's Restaurant, Imperial Number no. 9, to have this entree that was back bacon with halibut in a tower. Hmm. And it was just to, to die for. It sounds kind of fattening. It was one of those things where you start eating it and then you just don't want to talk to people because you, you, you can't stop eating. And and the social aspect of dining goes away because you're like some kind of a caveman. (laughs) It was really, really good. But Sam has got some great ideas on marinades and grilling. And unfortunately, he's he's out with stomach flu today and is unable to talk to us. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? I hope it wasn't from his own restaurant. I'm sure it wasn't his own restaurant. Probably it was over at someone else's house for Labor Day weekend. Eric Stormer with Cindy Dole, by the way. This is Home Wizards, where we love to help you improve your home and your life. And that includes um, having a good grilling experience. That's right. right? And, and, and I'll tell you, as far as I'm concerned, you just can't put a piece of meat or fish on a grill without some sort of a marinade because it, it, it doesn't really work as well. It so just, can I tell you, yeah. I made pork tenderloin. I marinated it all day. I used, I put it in a baggie and I had um, a, a raspberry vinegar, a chipotle kind of a seasoning and, and um, I think I added maybe a little bit more sauce to it too. Mm-hmm. And then salt and pepper. It came out tasting so bland, and my husband's like, "Really? <laughs> it tasted really bad." All that bad. work for this? It tasted terrible, and I think that we left some of it on the counter, and the dogs ended up getting it. Oh, but no. it tasted so. I mean, how do you marinate pork tenderloin? It it's really a stubborn little guy. It is, isn't it? And well, what Sam was telling me was a lot of his marinades, he infuses his oils with all sorts of great spices. You know, mm. and the one that in particular that was so good was. It was like a garlic aioli infusion into the olive oil with a little bit of pesto as well in there. Ooh. So it, it just gives everything that it touches this unique flavor. And, you know, you let it sit for a couple hours and you throw that on the grill with your lubricated tines mm-hmm. on the grill that we've talked about. And, and it's a it's an amazing it's a it's an amazingly different experience when you're cooking. And isn't it all about the rest, the rest before it cooks, and the rest after it? That's cooks, exactly right? right. He 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 stressed that it's you know you let you want to have it come off the grill and sit for a minute. It's actually a muscle, as he was explaining, and it needs to kind of not be in contraction from cooking, and it loosens up a bit after maybe five ten minutes, and it 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 does again make all the difference. And even before putting it on the grill, you got to let it sit for it. Room yeah, temperature. and that's the whole point kind of, of the marinade. It right. relaxes, and the and then everything kind of infuses it's into napping. the meat. It's now na- it's <laughs> sleeping, if you will. Yeah, and and then you know the other thing that we talked about was the different cooking styles uh, in terms of how the grill is influencing the way that it's prepared. For example, mm-hmm. a gas grill is all about convenience. You're going to get it to a certain temperature. It's consistent. But it's not going to have that same feeling as a as a traditional charcoal grill where you can start to burn woods like mesquite and cherry, and that also influences the way the food tastes. And then you take it to a third option, which is a smoker, and that's a long, slow cooking process over a a lower heat where you know the fire's off to the side, but the smoke comes into this chamber and infuses the meat and cooks it over several mm, hours. So that sounds scrumptious. It, it just isn't. It falls off the bone, and it's, it's amazing. So there are so many different ways to do this, but my favorite, I think, is that old school, just regular charcoal grill. You don't want to get the briquettes that are infused with with lighter fluid because that has a tendency to show up in the in the meat a little bit. So you get one of those uh, chimneys, which is like a cylindrical piece of metal with a handle on it, and you put that on top of the grill, pour your charcoal inside that cylinder, and light it with a little bit of fluid that way. And in about 10, 15 minutes, you're going to have perfect coals that are ready to burn and and cook your food. Can you use your Starbucks Go Cup? You can if you want. (laughs) (laughs) Knowing how much coffee I drink, yes, I probably have. It has like kind of that chimney look. Yeah, it really does. But, you know, if you do it the old way where you put the charcoal on the grill and light it with lighter fluid, it takes a long time to get it to the point where you're ready to cook. And you have to use so much lighter fluid that it really starts to flavor the meat that you're cooking. So mm-hmm. get one of those chimneys. It really makes a huge bit of difference. I've seen people use uh, uh, strands of rosemary, fresh rosemary, and put that on top of the charcoal briquettes itself as mm-hmm. another flavoring. 
Can you yeah. visualize that? I can you know? visualize it, yeah. And then it's just kind of bringing, it's wafting that scent on your chicken or your beef or whatever. Yeah, we, we had uh, you know a taste test between the mesquite and the cherry and then the gas grill and, and you know, hands down, anything cooked on one of those uh, traditional charcoal grills, you can just taste it. it. It sears it. It tastes a little bit different. But, again, with the kids and the family and how often I grill, the gas grill is the way to go in terms of convenience. So mm-hmm. that, that's kind of the go-to it's grill It's the microwave for me. version. It's the microwave of all grills. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So the aioli, it sounds like that's that's the way to really get some extra infusion into some of these meats that are, you know, really stubborn. Yeah, they really are. And 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 yeah, we I think we had it was a a New York st- uh, st- couple of New York strips marinated and with with the oil on there and the oiled grill, it it sears the meat and it immediately gets to a place where it's tender on the inside, not too dry. And then you just cook it for your five to seven minutes per side, and then you're good to go. And if you want those grill marks, mm-hmm. then you just flip it twice and change the direction and orientation of the way the meat is on the grill, and you'll get that nice yeah. checkerboard yes, look yes. on the meat itself. Yeah. My dad, one of his favorite classic things to grill, uh, Lucky Chucky ribs. Mm. What do you do? We call it rib fest. And it was the country style ribs, the pork ribs mm-hmm. that you baby, get. Like baby backs, right? Well, no, it's. Um, I love the baby they're, they're backs. They're bigger. They're thicker. The country style. They're oh, really okay. thick. Okay. Um, and they're mainly meat and some fat. Yeah. <laughs> and no bone, really. There's just a little bit of a bone in there. But then you, you boil the, the ribs first, and then he, we would uh, char them. And then we would then put them in the oven and then. And just kind of keep them soft with a little more sauce with foil. And that was one of his favorite things to do. But I remember that barbecue sauce getting, what a mess, all yes. over the grill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of things uh, that Sam was talking about when it comes to ribs, mm. it, it was the, you know, the you can boil the ribs uh, and kind of pre-cook them a little bit. Right. And then, and then throw them on the grill. Or you can bake them in the oven for a little while and then grill them. Grilling really is only the second half of the process. It's... Just a couple of minutes on both sides to give it that nice charred feel, but to cook them from from the raw point uh, is not what everybody recommends when it comes to the real way to do the ribs. What are you going to be having tomorrow night on the grill? Well, I, I'm going to do the steaks as usual. Oh, you are? Oh, yeah. Have to do that. Love those. A um, couple of good New Yorks, and then I think we're going to do, uh, you know, now that you've been talking about this paella, I don't know, <laughs> this, whole, this whole thing may translate well, to Well, it's a, always nice to have something pre-made. Yeah. Sure you know, is. because um, when you're entertaining, don't you think? I do. I do. And something pre-made that, what do you love that's pre-made that all you have to do is heat up? Well, the gr- the ribs, by the way, you can grill them in advance of people coming over. And then we would put them in the oven and just kind of keep them warm right. with the foil over, with the, with the sauce all seared in there and nice and flavorful. And they just stay soft and they're, you know, going to fall off the bone. And that's that's something that I think is kind of cool. Now, my dad, the greater of Stromer, he is the king of grilling burgers. And so his secret is to infuse the hamburger meat with a little bit of butter. Really? Yes. Butter and the inside hamburger? the hamburger, he put he puts it inside the burger, and you don't want to work it too much. That's the that's the secret. You don't you don't want to get it so flat with the hands. You know you're doing that uh-huh. back and forth. That toughens it up. You leave it loose, and then you infuse it with the. He does a little bit of a, an herb herb butter, and then you put that on the grill, and boy, it explodes with flavor. It sounds like it. I, I it explodes all this with... talk of food. I'm starving <laughs> and frantic right now. Oh. <laughs> Well, I have never tried oiling a steak, but it sounds like that is a, a secret weapon that a lot of chefs, mm-hmm. like Chef Sam Talbot, um, would use and that we might want to try. Like for your steaks tonight, that that's right. going to not only, like your dad putting butter in the burger, you right. want to have a little more oil for flavor, but also it it just kind of gives it a more um, a beautiful experience on the grates itself. That's exactly right. And, and also, again, getting back to the vegetables. Oh. You can't. You have to have some kind of marinade to brush those as you're cooking them. Otherwise, they burn and they're nasty and dry. What's your favorite marinade for vegetables? Well, I love a little bit of olive oil and garlic again. That's it? Yep, that's it. I love balsamic vinegar. Really? On some zucchini, olive oil and balsamic vinegar. A really thick, heavy one, you know? Mm -hmm. And just coat that over uh, squash, uh, bell peppers, onions. Yum. Going to try it. Let's, <laughs> let's try that one. Man alive. I know. Yeah, so again, back to the grills. I think it's a, it's a great time if you're if you're in the market for something to go out and take a look at grills because everybody seems to be 
you know, selling those things for a little bit less money around this time. With a year. Labor Day sales? That's exactly right, yeah. Yeah. So so don't forget, consider convenience versus a better flavor when it comes to the traditional grill versus that smoker situation where it takes a little more commitment. It's a longer-term process, but again, it, it produces great results. I'll never forget the time that we uh, tried to do our turkey on the grill. <laughs> For Thanksgiving. Yeah, I've Have heard. you ever done I've that? I've never done it. And then the other one is the deep fried turkey. The deep. Well, I've so we, never done that So either. this was very old school, putting the turkey on the rotisserie. And in, in theory, it sounded like a great idea. But, um, well, here it is Thanksgiving, and all the relatives are coming over, and my mom's a nervous wreck, and wouldn't you know it, but the turkey... Um, well, I'll have to tell you the rest in just a second. <laughs> Eric Stromer and Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards here on KFWB News Talk 980. We'll talk a little bit more about getting you ready for this last summertime bash here in the Southland. Don't go away. Well, so here it is Thanksgiving, and the and the turkey is completely. <laughs> well, I'm just. I was, I'm sorry. I'm okay. Just, look, it really yeah. is coming off from soaking in the solution uh, yeah. for the entire hour. Here, look how much better that looks. It is looking like we're well. We're talking about cleaning a grill and having a great grilling experience on Labor Day weekend. Eric Stromer is with me. Cindy Dole. This is Home Wizards, where we love to help you improve your home and your life. And so, picture it is. It's Thanksgiving. I mean, the pressure's on to have mm-hmm. a great meal. My mom is sitting there, a nervous wreck, and my dad has decided to put the turkey, the holiday turkey, on a rotisserie. And somehow, without knowing it, we're all inside having appetizers and a good time, and it was basically, uh, 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 it was sticking, no. and it wasn't rotating fully, and it, the fat was dripping, and it caught fire, and it came out completely as black as this great, this great, my, from my grill looks, is what our Thanksgiving turkey looked like. In fact, <laughs> I even, I have a picture I should put on the on the website. It was black, all, but it was yummy on the inside. Oh, no. Because all the juices were, you know, protected inside. No, no. Thanksgiving. We had a a great party that my mom and dad threw for for the kids and and everybody a couple of years ago, and somehow, unfortunately, four of the seven steaks were dropped on the ground, and my dog Hazel grabbed two of them and just chomped them right down immediately, and and that's when you start to fire up the pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so we're going to be doing some grilling this weekend. Are you? I mean, it, yes, you know, I, I, I can't am. believe that it, we're in September. I can't either. How can it be September when it's you know? I come from Chicago. It's about you know sixty five degrees usually in September. Here it's about one hundred and seventy five in the valley. So, I mean, before you know it, we're going to be talking about pumpkins and Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas. And, and, and boy, I'll tell you, we are because I love I love Halloween and I've got some great pumpkin carving tools i can't wait to break them out you bet yeah (laughs) actually coincidentally the same tools i used to cut the steaks perfect but you clean them (laughs) in between yes i do well speaking of cleaning there are some things that we need to do to the grill i know it's not the sexiest thing to think about but um we have some tips to to after you've had this wonderful meal and maybe even before i mean it's it's hope it's hopeful that your grill has been maintained up till now you know what i mean we're recommending once a month once a month is good, and it's it's always best to do it while the while the grill is hot. Mm-hmm. You know, like anything, work with the heat to kind of melt things down, right? right. To let the the fat because yeah, most of it most of it is fat with some old meat that's been you know turned into carbon black, so. and it's going to disinfect the grill. That's and right. Not only that, but help to clean it too. So you've got the you've got your little brush. I use a traditional brush. wire brush, which I also use. Don't tell anybody, but I use this to clean paint brushes. I was going to say your well. teeth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I I love the wire brush because it really say, look at that. It just it works oh, so yeah. well to clean yeah. any kind of metal, and and it's simple and takes all the, the debris off pretty rapidly. But I love this technique that so, you have. So with, my technique with the is tin foil. is basically you get out your tin foil. Yeah. And while you, while it's still on the grill, the grates are still there. That you turned it on, mm-hmm. and let it sit there for a little bit on on low heat. And then you, with your ball of foil that you've just, you know, turned into this ball, you're now using that as your tool. Do me a favor. Go go on this part here with the foil, and then okay. Now let me compare that to the wire brush. <laughs> you know, it's so, actually not, it's, it's it is. pretty look at it. similar. It's, come, it's starting to look silver. But so this is one technique. Now this still requires a little bit of elbow grease, but you can see, well, you can hear and you can visualize that it that all of the carbon is going down. Now another one that's less work: mm-hmm. take foil and wrap it around all the grates, 
and then put it back in your grill and leave it on for about a half an hour half an hour with the lid down mm-hmm. on like low medium heat mm-hmm. and then the third option which I think you kind of like too right I do I love that option you, you take all the grates off right. you put ammonia on the grates with a paper towel and then you wrap it up like it's in a nice little blankie it's in a sleeping bag yeah. fully enclosed and then you put it in a trash bag and leave it overnight 24 hours and the next day after you hose it off and fire back the grill to burn off any remaining ammonia boom you should have a pretty well my, look at my hands I have charcoal on them now yeah. but it, it'll look like brand it'll look like a brand new yeah grace. and then when you re-oil it and you re-oil it you're and boy, gonna be back in business because you remember are, when those grills are brand new the cooking experience it tastes the best it's much better and you feel like aren't you like the best grill guy on the, the planet. In the world. I feel like that anyway. But, yeah. <laughs> well, Gives you a little added confidence. So we do we do this basically every how often you think. We're doing this once a month. Once a month yeah. at least. Yeah. How about every 10 cookouts? There's some more things. I mean, how how often do you really go down below to get those lower grates to uh to clean off those metal things, you know, that are above the burners and such? Yeah, they're just I mean, below the grates. It's a it's, it's a, collecting all this it, ash. It, it really is. And once you do it once you realize it's not that difficult. And you can easily do it with a shop vac if you want to suck all that old stuff out. When the grill is cool, clean the debris out, wash it with a soapy solution, agitate it with a wire brush or this tin foil idea that you've come up with. And, and you know, it really is going to make a huge difference in the way the cooking experience is. And we like the idea of, uh, of, of oiling a paper towel, right, and using the brush. Use the, to, uh, the grill brush to to use clean the grate to, while to it's on low heat. It. Yeah, yep, you bet, you bet. I mean, oil. It's all about the oil and the heat for everything, for the cooking and the cleaning. Yeah, it really you know? is. And you know, I use. Do you use stainless steel cookware? I do. I do too. And and it, you can't do it without an appropriate amount of oil. And and I don't think it's that bad for you if you use olive oil in moderation. It, it, it just, oh, it's antioxidants. Yes, it is. <laughs> and that's why, I, might I say, your skin looks so vibrant right <laughs> Thank now. You. <laughs> yeah, we want to have a lot of good oil. We were saying that, well, one of my favorites is popcorn oil. And when you, when you are using popcorn oil, I uh, Orville Redenbarker, it's a Orville. butter, the butter flavored oil. We put that to coat our grates and but grapeseed oil, olive oil. But when you are covering your uh, your grates with um, popcorn oil, then you, it reminds me of this old recipe that we have, marvelous munchies. Mm-hmm. And you have to then bring out this recipe and make that so then you can munch and crunch the weekend. It's basically oyster crackers, Hidden Valley Ranch um, powder dressing, mm-hmm. a dill powder, seed, and uh, the oil. Boom. Let it sit overnight in these oyster crackers, and you just turn them and turn them and turn them, and then the next day you've got a whole like month's worth of snacks for when people come over. You're kidding. It's called Marvelous Munchies. I've never heard this one. You can, hear, is, you can share this, it right okay, there. Yeah. Is that going to be on the website? <laughs> I'll put on the, web, the website, yourhomewizards.com. We've got all kinds of fun stuff up there. You see videos of Eric uh, on his AOL. Tell everybody about your AOL Yeah, videos. it's an amazing thing, you know, because, again, it's it's showing folks how to do things in two to three minutes where, where you know, you get easily explained situations like baseboard or how to paint a wall or you know crown molding something like that and and it's done in such a way that it, you know the, the information is conveyed quickly but it's effective so if you're in a bind and you don't know quite what to do or what kind of materials you need for a certain kind of home improvement project there it is diy life on aol so yeah check that out we yeah. have the link there and yeah. uh, and also on the website we have uh, some video of you with a uh, your other buddies from AOL, yeah, Sam Car- Carter and Carter. and Sam doing their thing. And, and, uh, and you're working a, on some grills. Working on grills, absolutely. You'll get to see some of these techniques we've been talking about today for the past hour. All right. So. Just go to yourhomewizards.com. Um, other things that we need to think about for cleaning the grill, because it, you know this may be the last summer weekend, but it's not the last time that we're going to be using our grills. I mean, we're lucky here in Southern California, although I think across the country people get out. People like in Poland get out there in Russia <laughs> in fur coats and want to grill. They do with they those do. Big fur hats. Yeah. <laughs> and plenty of vodka, probably. That's right. You know, you know I see a theme occurring there with is. the alcohol there and the cooking. There can be. Yeah. There can be. The, I, the sangria yes, recipe sangria that you, probably, yep. you, know, you can get there also on the website. But what about cleaning the outside of the grill, especially if it's stainless steel? I know you have a technique, but I, I like to look at natural products whenever possible. Mm-hmm. And like baking soda is always so good. It's good for your teeth. Yes, white it is. Your teeth, yes, it but is. it's also good with some H2O paste. And then some. you rinse that, and, and then you polish it with flour and a soft cloth. And that's really good to get that nice spick shine for the oh, exterior. So that, yeah, because that's the downside of cleaning stainless there's a it's fingerprints yeah you know especially so, with your kids that's right so that sounds like a great way to buff out 
your grill and make it look beautiful. And then when you're done, you throw on that that nice grill cover that you can buy in an aftermarket situation Mm -hmm. because I think it really helps to keep it covered in terms of the droppings from trees, you know, gardeners blowing dust up into it, sap, all that stuff. It just kind of takes the wind out of you after you've spent all that time cleaning and then it's dirty the next day. So I love the covers. You like to wear it sometimes. Sometimes I use it as a, a fine <laughs> Halloween outfit. Okay. Um, a poncho. It is a, it's a lovely poncho. That's right. Um, I also <laughs> like the idea when, well, hey, you're, you're going to be grilling tonight. I know you are. Tomorrow, too, and maybe Monday. That's a lot of grilling. It's a lot, That's of, a grilling. lot of stuff now on those grates. Mm-hmm. Why not try the grass method? I mean, boom. You wait till it's, it's nightfall or just about so, and uh, all the guests are maybe just lingering on the deck or inside, wherever. You take the grates, you put them on the grass mm-hmm. and let it sit there. And then and in, the the dew mo- works. in the morning dew, we'll just kind of say, you know what? I'm taking you down. Grease be gone, it says. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it was great uh, having you guys uh, listen to us here on this Labor Day weekend. We have a special version of Home Wizards tomorrow from 3 to 4. I cannot wait. We're going to be talking about deck here. ideas. Yes, we are. And uh, we also have some more uh, garden ideas, so don't miss that one. And next Saturday, we're back 2 to 4 because the fun continues as we help you ho- improve your home and improve your life. Eric Strummer. I'll Good see you next you. week. Well, check actually, out, I'll see you tomorrow. Check out yourhomewizards.com. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow. And remember this, the key's under the mat. Bye-bye.